Hey guys, it's time to did it did 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 it draw this while I nerd out a little bit about Yu-Gi-Oh. So enjoy that. What's up, people? I'm back, and I figured it was time to make another video. You know, I I haven't had many tutorial based ideas lately um but i am i'm still drawing so i figured i'd just turn on the microphone and go through this drawing that i'm just working on right now because the thing about this one is it's a second parter to a drawing that i did a while back and i'll put that up on the screen right now bam yes kaiba the goat personally well I, I don't even want to get into this this like opinion I have about Kaiba versus Yugi. I think they're both the GOAT. They're just two great characters. You know how my whole About Me video was me just like loving on Dragon Ball? This is going to be my video about how much I'm loving on Yu-Gi-Oh right now. Because this show uh, was definitely a big part of my childhood too. So I collected the cards. I went to, I went to freaking tournaments. I went to Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments, guys. Do you know how high caliber you need to be to compete in a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament? And, and l let me not say this without l adding the fact that I had Exodia in my deck. Never once pulled it, but still, I had Exodia in my deck. So, I mean, it was just the, the sole fact that it was in my deck alone that gave me enough power to just feel confident enough to take on anybody in a tournament, even though I did lose after the first, like, the first couple rounds each time, but... That's neither here nor there. Today we're, we're talking about a Yugi drawing that's going to be kind of the face-off version of the Kaiba drawing that you've just seen. So I figured why not do a Yugi one with Dark Magician, Dark Magician Girl, and Karibo. So let's just jump right into the time lapse and I'll just try to break it down real quick. So to start off, I don't think this sketch was originally going to be an actual drawing of Yugi. Until I saw, like, I noticed the hand that I drew here. It was like, it kind of looked like he was holding a card. So just a small little glimpse into this, the process is like, sometimes if you don't have any ideas, just sketch, dude. Just sketch a body. And then from there, uh, the body might start looking like a character uh, that you can relate it to. But yeah, like, I would, I would compete in tournaments. And with my friend Edward, we would, like build our decks together and there was a shop called artifacts in Mir mesa that did these Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments and it was it was so so great because you could like go there and it was exactly how you see in the show where people were just trading cards and playing against each other and they always had like a glass case of all the all the singles that you could buy and i remember one time um I went into the shop and I bought the left leg of Exodia, which was like the last piece because I was collecting it over time. I think I found one in a pack, but I would buy the singles and then be like, hey, guys, I got the I got it in a pack so I could like be I don't I don't know if that makes you more legit or not. If you just if you found the pack organic or if you found the card organically in a pack. But um, I, I that was a big part of my sort of sort of shtick was I wanted to tell everybody that like. You know, I, I I came upon it naturally instead of uh, forced, you know, forced my destiny upon it. You know, with by just by just taking a shortcut and buying it outright. But um, real quick here, this is a little composition thing. So as I'm trying to draw the dark magician, I want to get his hands in a place where they're both visible. So you can see here, I'm trying to play with the placement of it, and I kind of end right, like in in this sort of kind of bay where all the lines surround that other hand and that's kind of an important part of trying to make your composition balance itself out is filling in any white space that seems uh, uh, unnatural uh like i can say the white space to the left of the dark magician is a bit wide for my taste but knowing that i'm gonna photoshop this into another uh into a bigger piece with kaiba i could i could fix it there um so here I'm, I'm i'm jumping in adding that dark magician girl she didn't really show up in the anime a lot i don't think he was always calling upon the dark magician which which is messed up dude dark magician girl is pretty cute so and karibo and karibo dude you can't 
You can't forget Karibo the goat. The reason I added Karibo was because of that super iconic scene where him and Kaiba are fighting right outside Pegasus's castle. Come on now, you know that. You know that scene where Kaiba's like willing to throw away his life to win the game. But I mean, you know, in with the motivation to save Mokuba on his, like obviously, but still, it's that's a real mad lad move if I could be honest. But yeah, let's move over to the inking and coloring. So we got our thing printed out. We got our we got our piece printed out. But anyways, um as I was saying, the duel the whole duelist kingdom arc was like honestly the most memorable to me. It was you know, you you had you had like so many so many matchups, right? Let's not forget that the whole thing starts off with literally Weevil Underwood, this this one kid who is just the biggest jackass, the biggest jerk, man, takes Exodia, throws that shit over the boat, and Yugi jumps in after it. That show that goes to show you how important this set is. And what a what a way to start off this whole Duelist Kingdom arc. And then throughout the whole thing, you got these matchups that are just so perfect, like Joey and Rex. That legendary. Let me tell you right now, legendary. And it's just a great show. So I mean. But I gotta say, I think the Duelist Kingdom arc, it's definitely the most memorable, whereas the designs of the characters got a real glow up in the Battle City arc. And you can't tell me that's not wrong. The fact that they had the sick duel discs and Kaiba had his like slick white jacket, you you could totally tell that they went back to the drawing board and they were like, alright, we need to we need to spruce these designs up a bit. Cause that Battle City uh, season was was definitely pretty. But I didn't follow it as much as Duelist Kingdom, which it felt like it was more, you know, more based off the personality and kind of the whole story behind Joey's uh, need to save Serenity and all that. Um, I'm, I'm just going on a tangent, just loving on Yu-Gi-Oh for a minute. Like what we got here right now is we're inking Yugi. It's a very delicate place to ink the face, right? Because like you can you can mess up pieces here and there but the face is where everybody's looking at like as soon as they see the picture so you don't want to mess that part up that's why every time i like start a drawing and i'm doing the face it's, it takes like twice the time as any other body part right i never really understood like the way yugi's hair worked like in the like just take a take a look at cosplayers for example like Look how they figure that shit out, and it still doesn't really look that natural. But the way the artist draws it in the anime, it it looks dope. But is it like, is the yellow parts that are going up his hair like bangs that are just flipped upwards? Or is that part of the hair that's... Because before he transforms, he doesn't have like the yellow lightning bolts going up his hair. And then when he does, they, they, you know, they appear there. But does that mean like his, his, he just like went a little bit Super Saiyan? I don't know, man. I don't know. The design's rad. I'm not nitpicking that. I just don't know how it works. But then again, it's anime. So does it need to work? You know, that's the golden question. It's weird. I, I got way more into this than I did Pokemon as a kid. The designs, I, I think also the designs were just cooler it was more my my sort of thing cuz pokemon's like a lot cuter and sort of all around more rounder whereas yu-gi-oh is a lot more sharper and uh just like kind of gritty so and i and you know i was a sharp gritty kid so i i latched on to yu-gi-oh right it also had a kick-ass show so not to say pokemon wasn't but I mean, if you compare Ash's journey through the first the first eight badges to the Duelist Kingdom arc, you know that well actually that's a pretty good thing to compare is the Duelist Kingdom arc versus the first eight badges is the Kanto arc, right? In Pokemon, dude, you can't say the stakes were way higher in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like his grandpa was sealed away in a card, like trapped in a card, and he had to go 
uh, beat Pegasus to to release him. And I mean, same with Kaiba's brother and everything. Like people were just sealed away, trapped in cards. Whereas Pokemon, it was just all about Ash becoming the best and better than anyone ever was, you know. And all he needed were gym badges. But in Yugi's case, I mean, he needed he needed to knock out a couple dudes to to save his grandpa. It's it's a rescue mission, right? Instead of like a completionist journey. It's definitely a good juxtaposition between the two. You can see the edginess definitely kicks up a bit compared to Pokemon. But I, I don't know. There's something about Yugi's design that just makes it so fun to draw. Like, what are the what are the black? What's the black part in the middle? Is it the is it the fact that the pink part in the end is the highlight and the black part is like the roots of his hair? So he's got bangs flying up. He's got black roots and pink hair tips. I think that's I think that's kind of the the scientific breakdown of how this man's hair works. All right, so here you can see I'm I'm outlining Dark Magician Girl with a different color um as I want to I want to kind of keep Yugi as the main uh sort of focal point of the drawing, so that's why I'm out, I outlined him in black whereas all the dual monsters around him i'm gonna keep more of a lighter outline or like a a tonal color um just to make them kind of fall into the background a bit better so if you're trying to do like a, a multi-group shot like this that's kind of a good tip to take away if if that's how you want to separate your characters and you want to really bring out one of them do you guys ever play that game boy game the i don't remember what it's called Let's see, Yu-Gi-Oh! Game Boy Worldwide Edition. Yu-Gi-Oh! Game Boy Worldwide Edition in the Sacred Cards. Those games were so awesome because it was like an RPG. It was like you played out the story. And that was so rad. Why don't they make games like that anymore with with like like Kakarot, but Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Like you have Duel Links now, which is just you can play the card game. But you don't have like the the fact that you could play as Yugi and you're running around Duelist Kingdom or Battle City and you're taking out all these guys and then the game is also included. Like, why hasn't that game been made? I feel like I, I played the shit out of that game. It's the same thing with the Naruto games, right? Like they almost they touch on it a bit with um uh what was, was it Broken Bonds? That one had, like, a free roam around uh, Konoha. Now, that was pretty rad, but none of these games ever, like, fully commit to the just the story as much as Kakarot did. Even though I gotta say, like, I gotta say my review on Kakarot, you know, as much as a Dragon Ball fan I am, it got it got a little repetitive after the... Uh, after the Cell Saga. It was, it was, it's kind of hard for me to pick up the Boo Saga just because it's like all the fights are the same. Like So at this point, I'm just kind of playing so I can see the cutscenes. Uh, and it's it's a, it's hard to keep me inspired to keep going, but I got to finish it. But as for like a Yu-Gi-Oh game, you can't tell me that a cool RPG where he's like running around talking to people and you're leveling up your deck and stuff, that wouldn't be dope as hell. Hopefully someday they come out with that. But if you want a very basic version of it, go check out the Sacred Cards. By the way, which by the way, completely unrelated, I'm I'm still trying to work out kind of how I want to make these videos and, uh, you know how I how I want to go about, like if I don't really know what to teach on a drawing, I'll just talk about you know talk about whatever right whatever comes to my mind or the character or show that I'm drawing the picture of. Uh, so, I mean, sometimes you'll probably get these where there's not, you, you won't learn a lot, but I mean, hopefully you do from, from watching, you'll be able to pick up some of the techniques I do. But I mean, while I'm, while I'm recording these, I'm not like a hundred percent sure what more can be explained. Uh, I mean, leave in the comments if you, whatever questions you have, and I'll be sure to cover them in future videos. Uh, but yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this, you know, just kind of dropped in, figured I'd do a cool time lapse of this Yu-Gi-Oh drawing and kind of show you what it looks like in the end too. I'll, I'll match them up here on the screen. Um, 
but yeah, yeah, another another drawing down, another video made. I hope you found some of it enjoying. I just kind of fanboyed, kind of took a step back and looked at all the cool Yu-Gi-Oh related things that I took part in as a kid. Uh, but yeah, cool. As always, thank you for watching and listening and give me a like if you liked it. Hit me with any, uh, any video ideas you guys may have. And yeah, I'm out. Take care, guys.